Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. My hero pool consists of all the heroes named Storm Spirit and Hero Spirit you, guides on Storm, other heroes, lanes, mechanics, and everything in between. I also stream, coach, and analyze your replays. To support the content, you can get one of those services or just buy me a cup of coffee on Patreon. And with all that said, let's go. Storm clouds are gathering! Wiper has become my solid second option when Storm Spirit would have a questionable match. And while I'm by no means a Wiper expert, I have been maintaining and improving my own farming style, and if I, someone who isn't always the most efficient farmer, can be successful with it, so can you. Let's talk how. First, let's talk about the Nether Toxin placement. At the first levels, even if you push out the lane towards the enemy tower, it is too early to stack or clear jungle, and there's not much else you can do besides throwing weak right clicks. So opening your lane with nether toxin right away is not always an ideal choice. To maximize early level efficiency, throw it down when enemy is getting ready to last hit and deny, and this will mess with the speed creeps are dying at and force the opponent to either miss some of the hits or at least take damage in the process. But from level 3 onwards, Wiper can begin to just open with another toxin, do a fast clear and rotate to the jungle. Now some players might think, if I can sit in the lane and can successfully prevent the enemy hero from farming, shouldn't I continue to do so instead of leaving the lane? No. If your plan is to shut down the enemy mid laner, you chose the wrong hero. Huskar shuts down the enemy mid, Sky Mage shuts down the enemy mid, Viper can shut down the enemy mid, but what he does best is just waltz through the creeps, dancing all the way and by 15 minutes being ahead of the enemy mid in levels and items. So it doesn't matter what the enemy picks, because you only plan to show up in the lane for a second, shove it out and continue the jungle rotation to maximize your farm. Enemy picks Lina and just throws spells at you, salva before returning to the lane, and she has no kill potential. Enemy picks Morphling and denies every single range creep. He is now trapped under his own tower while you take 3 to 6 jungle camps for every range creep he denied. The only way enemy hero is dictating your gameplay is how fast you need to return to your tower to greet the incoming creeps. Now let's talk efficiency. First thing you'll want to do is spend your second lane tango to cut a tree into the medium camp closest to the tower. This is for Radiant only, Dire's camp is always open. This makes accessing it on earlier levels easier. Returning to the lane, either the enemy will adopt similar approach and be in the jungle himself, or he'll try to sit in the lane and maintain equilibrium near his tower. With the first option, clear the wave the fastest way by removing the ranged creep first. If the enemy is in the lane and is capable of denying the ranged creep, there are a few methods you can practice to secure it. Another toxin deals its damage in ticks, and if you time your attack to be as close to the final tick as possible, it is enough to secure the hit even if the enemy has damage advantage. Second method is to simply body block the creep's hitbox with your own, making it harder for the enemy to issue the attack order. In the jungle, the farming pattern goes as follows. Clear either the small camp closest to the tower or the big camp next to mid tier 2. The reason for this is that if you're ready and in the correct spot at the 54 seconds mark, you can stack the other big and small camp together. To do so, place another toxin at second 54 in one camp and hit the other at second 55. Viper can stack and clear camps this way as early as level 3. By placing your salt puddle in the middle of the two camps, the creeps die very fast. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. It's mine. Finally, always have regeneration queued up and ready to send out. The best package is usually two mangoes, two clarities, and a self. Clarities for passive regen in the jungle, and mango self for a quick boost in the lane itself. Always send out your regen bundled, not one by one, otherwise you will delay courier for your other lanes. Usually I send myself regen out every 3 minutes or so, leaving enough time for side lanes to share the courier. 
These methods, when done efficiently, should land Viper around 150 last hits by minute 15 or more depending on individual player's efficiency. You now outlevel every hero on the map and just with that you are extremely hard to gank. Killing spree. Never die. And by now you should also have Rod and can pretty much secure kills anywhere on the map. Some players will flame you for not ganking their lanes at Vipers level 6, ignore those. Visiting other lanes for a hero kill is often not worth the last time and mana not rotating through the jungle. It is also often best to delay leveling Viper Strike until Atos 2, considering most heroes would just run away. Only join the fights to defend tower dives or when a decent ruin presents itself. And this concludes Viper's laning phase. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Mega kill. Ownage. The Phantom strikes. With the Atos kills, Viper should have no problem securing outer towers, which in turn would earn him Greaves, which in turn helps secure the inner towers. A dominating performance. Onage. <laughs> Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Feel free to farm the enemy jungle in between objectives, as you should have created enough space by now for the enemy team to be afraid to enter any dark areas. Now, after laning phase, Viper does slow down his farming speed as he focuses more on towers and hero hunts. As long as he translates into gain space for the team, it is all okay. The item advantage Viper earned during his early game will continue to make him relevant throughout the mid game. Blackened bomb. Dominating, I guess. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Return to I will your death. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And as for optimization for late game, I will discuss the options in another video. For now, I'll leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. I only wanted to kill everyone. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. The Radiant are scaring Dyer's bottom barracks has fallen. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. Dyer's bottom barracks has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dominating, I guess. Own it. Oh, oh no. I have seen the other side. It can wait. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's engine is under attack. Is that intentional? Looks intentional. Mega kill. Oh no. Radiant victory.